Hey, happy Monday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Hey, listen, do not forget June 15th, 16th, Montgomery, Alabama, at the Eastern Meadows Church of Christ in Montgomery, Alabama. I'll be having my second formal debate with Dr. David Hester, professor at Faulkner University. You don't want to miss this. Uh, by the way, I'm Many, many of you have contacted me and asked if it's going to be live streamed. I have asked Dr. Hester repeatedly now as to whether or not it will be. He's still trying to get that information for me. Hopefully this week we will have some word on that. Uh, but be there if you can. All right? This promises to be good. And then, of course, do not forget... July 13th through the 15th, Preterist Pilgrim Weekend right here in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And we've got three speakers on our dais this year that we've never had before. Really, really exciting. Our theme is the problems with post-millennialism. And no, we couldn't get anyone to come and engage in formal debate. Anyway, we are currently looking at the theme that Paul introduces or discusses in 1 Corinthians 15, when he says, Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And this motif of resurrection and entrance into the kingdom is extremely powerful. It, it is a theme, I, as I shared with you, from just a few key Old Testament prophecies that tie resurrection and kingdom together absolutely inextricably. And not only that, they give us the emphatic context, the emphatic framework for kingdom and resurrection, and that was the end of the old covenant age of Israel. At the end of that age, not at the end of the Christian age. Now then, I've hinted at this a little bit, but I want to suggest to you that a study of John the Baptizer is one of one of the most one of the richest, exciting, thrilling, and important studies when it comes to eschatology. Years ago, I heard a, a prominent Church of Christ minister, somewhere around 1976, give a lesson on John the Baptizer, and he he spoke for an hour. And he said, somebody needs to write a book on John the Baptizer. How important a figure he was. Do you know, in, a, in an entire 45-minute presentation, that Church of Christ minister never mentioned the relationship between John and eschatology even once. Not once. And yet... Follow me now. Jesus made it clear that John was Elijah. Matthew chapter 17, 10 through 12. The disciples understood Jesus when he said, Elijah has already come. They understood him <coughs> to be talking about John the baptizer. Now, John, Elijah was supposed to come before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. The great and the terrible day of the Lord, according to Malachi chapter 3, 15 through 16, would be the day in which the books would be opened and God would gather the jewels in his crown. Well, what's that? That's Revelation chapter 20. When the books would be opened <clears throat> and those written in the book would receive everlasting life in the new creation. So here is Jesus affirming unequivocally, undeniably, that Elijah had come in the person of John the baptizer. But Elijah was supposed to come before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, the day of the Lord when the books would be opened and God would gather the jewels of his crown and reward them, <coughs> pardon me, which is the end of the millennium resurrection. Well, here is John 
as Elijah, who proclaimed the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Or well, what's what is Revelation 21 and 22? That is, when the books are to be opened and the righteous said enter into the new heaven and new earth, what is that except entrance into the everlasting kingdom of God? And what did John say? The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. And he warned the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is about to come. John said, remember, John is Elijah. John said, the acts, that's the acts of judgment at the great and terrible day of the Lord that he was proclaiming as Elijah. The axe is already at the root. The winnowing fork, that's the instrument of harvest. The instrument at the end of the har <coughs> harvest is already in his hand. Folks, it couldn't get any clearer <coughs> that John, as Elijah, was proclaiming kingdom and resurrection. Look, in the tradition in which I was raised, they were saying, well, he was predicting the day of Pentecost. No, he wasn't. He was predicting the arrival of the kingdom at the great and the terrible day of the Lord. When that axe blow would be dealt, when the wheat would be separated from the chaff, which is what Elijah would proclaim according to Malachi chapter 4. Now listen, when we see that John was proclaiming the coming of the kingdom at the time of the judgment, and we correlate that with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that demands that the resurrection at the time of the harvest, at the time of the kingdom, was at the end of the old covenant age that was being harvested in A.D. 70. If you want a full discussion of this and a whole lot more, get a copy of my book, Elijah Has Come, A Solution to Romans 11, 25 to 27. Uh, look, you will you'll simply be amazed at how important John the Baptizer is for the study of resurrection. Get a copy of the book. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Order the book. Send me an email or a note that says you saw the offer on YouTube and Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Thank you so very, very much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. We've got more. <coughs> Pardon me. On the relationship between kingdom and resurrection. So we'll see you on the flip side.